What's going on, everyone? Welcome into NBA Weekly. I'm your host, Harris Rubenstein. Got a fun show on tap for everyone today, going through the top NBA rumors and news from across the association. By the way, happy middle of the offseason day. We are 63 days from the NBA Finals, and we got 63 days until the start of the NBA season on October 16th. So without further ado, let's get into the top news and rumors. And to start, Carmelo Anthony, for the fourth show in a row, has officially joined the Houston Rockets once and for all. And I say for the fourth consecutive show because it just seems like every single show we're mentioning that Melo has officially joined the Rockets. But ink has hit paper, the T's have been crossed, the I's have been dotted, it is done. Carmelo Anthony is officially a member of the Houston Rockets. But what's most interesting about him moving there is not that he's a part of the Rockets, it's how he got confirmed by Mike D'Antoni. So apparently Carmelo Anthony called Mike D'Antoni through this whole process just to see how they would fit because the two of them obviously had played and coached together in New York. Things didn't go very well and Melo wanted to clear the air a little bit. But it seems that Melo is very open to any sort of role on the Rockets. He doesn't want to be the primary scorer or the primary playmaker. He says that he's okay being a supporter of other stars on this team and he also mentioned that he'd be okay coming off the bench. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Carmelo Anthony, who currently has the longest active starting streak in the NBA, he has never, not once in his entire NBA career, come off the bench. Carmelo Anthony has told the Houston Rockets that he is okay coming off the bench and that he's willing to do so and support the other stars on his team. Now, I personally think a sixth man role would be perfect. It would be absolutely perfect for Carmelo Anthony. It would help with his lack of defensive prowess. It would allow his minutes to be managed. He wouldn't be chucking up as many shots and he'd be more of a role player, which Carmelo Anthony very much needs to be at this point in his career. It's just interesting that it, it's taken so much time for him to be willing. You would hope that when he went to the Thunder, he'd be more willing to have taken a role like that. But for now, it seems that he is going to be okay coming off the bench, which is an absolute miracle for the Houston Rockets. He is going to be a perfect bench guy for them. Because think about it, their first unit is going to be James Harden, Chris Paul, Clint Capella. Their second unit, you add in Eric Gordon plus Carmelo Anthony and the Anthony Melton. You throw in Nene, Ryan Anderson, plus a couple of nice guys that they have on that bench. I think with Melo on the bench rather than the starting lineup, the Rockets are a better and deeper team. Now, we have James Ennis listed as the starter, but it needs to be made clear that Melo is still going to be competing for a starting spot in training camp. He's willing to come off the bench. However, it is not a shoe in that he's actually going to be a bench guy for the Rockets. He still wants a starting spot, and he will be in contention for one at camp. But it seems that Mike D'Antoni, as of right now, is leaning towards Melo coming off off the bench for the Houston Rockets. So we got a weigh-in coming for you guys here live on YouTube and on Facebook. How many games will the Rockets win this year? It's tough. They won so many last year. I don't think they're going to hit that 60 win mark again this year. I think 55 to 56 is a good marker for the Houston Rockets. I think that's where they'll probably come in. I mean, look, they still have James Harden. They still have Chris Paul. They brought back Clint Capella. This is still one of the NBA elite teams. I understand that we've kind of chopped them up a little bit because they've lost a lot of good pieces on this team. But let's also take a step back and realize that they did only lose Trevor Ariza and Luke Mbamute. It's not like they lost two perennial all-stars or the two best players on the team. They only lost Trevor Ariza and Luke Mbamute. They add James Ennis. They bring back P.J. Tucker. They bring in Carmelo Anthony. They draft a guy like DeAnthony Melton. So they still have a ton of talent on this team and a lot of quality. I think 55 games is going to end up being the number for the Houston Rockets this year. So let me know in the comment section below. Also, while you're here, let me know what you guys are feeling today. Where are you from? How are you doing? Happy Tuesday to everyone watching here on YouTube and on Facebook. Let's jump over to our next NBA news and rumor. Gordon Hayward is dunking again, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, a video has emerged of Gordon Hayward driving against a, uh, a I won't, obviously not an NBA level defender, but going against someone while he's training. And here we are, Gordon Hayward, for the first time since that angle injury, throwing it down over the guy that's defending him. Great to see 
see him getting some elevation off of his ankles. I understand that obviously it was his left ankle and he's jumping off his right ankle here. So it is, you know, if the fact that he can dunk off his right ankle should be expected because it was his left ankle that got injured. But any sort of driving and dunking that's coming from Gordon Hayward is fantastic news for the Boston Celtics, who as of right now have only seen positive news come out of the Gordon Hayward camp, whether it's him shooting really well, he's shooting threes quite well, or now he's dunking. This is everything that the Boston Celtics have wanted and more. So we'll keep track of how Gordon Hayward's progression goes throughout the season. I got quite a bit of flack for not having him in the top 10 for our small forward position, but I think it was reasonable not have him there. When he's, when he's healthy, I don't think he's a top five small forward. I think that there are five guys in the NBA who are better than him and Kevin Rant, LeBron James, in no order, by the way. Kevin Rant, LeBron James, Giannis, Kawhi Leonard, and then there's a fifth guy off the top of my head who's very obvious who I'm simply just missing. I'll, uh, well, you guys can go check out the top 10 small forwards video that we have on YouTube right now. But if Gordon Hayward's the number six small forward in the NBA and he drops about four or five spots due to that ankle injury, that puts him at number 10 and number 11. And for me, he came in at number 11 because we have no idea what kind of player he's going to be. But let me know in the comments section, will Gordon Hayward be an all-star this year? Give me a one for yes, give me a two for no. I say yes, simply because without LeBron James there, there just simply isn't a ton of talent at the forward position, especially at the small forward position in the Eastern Conference. So I think he will end up being an all-star this year, but I wonder how many Boston Celtics players in general are going to end up making the all-star team this year. Because there are a lot of guys who are eligible. I mean, their entire starting five are all-star caliber players. Kyrie Irving is an all-star caliber player. Jalen Brown has almost made it to an all-star game last year. Jalen, or excuse me, Jason Tatum is probably going to make an all-star team this year. Gordon Hayward has made it in the past and Al Horford is also a, an all-star as well. So they have five guys who could all realistically end up being an all-star for this team, but we got to see what Gordon Hayward's health is like when the start of the year comes around. Because for me personally, I am not 100% convinced that we're actually going to see a fully healthy Gordon Hayward until maybe about the Christmas. I think Christmas is when we'll see him back and ready to go. Got a comment coming in from Raphael Centinel. The Celtics won't win the East. I highly disagree with you, Raphael. Highly disagree. They're going to win 60 games and win the Eastern Conference. The only team that really could take it from them is the Toronto Raptors with Kawhi Leonard. But I think the Celtics are going to end up winning the Eastern Conference. Let's go to our next NBA news and rumor here. Jaleel Okafor is trying to bulk up. So a picture came out showing a little before and after action with Jaleel Okafor and how well he's been working out so far this summer. Check this out, guys. Khalil Okafor looks great. The dude is absolutely ripped, or at least he's got abs now. The, you know, his whole upper body's looking a lot better. Apparently, he's on a new diet and is really trying to you know, get his training where it needs to be. Look, Jaleel Okafor might just be on his last NBA legs right now. I mean, he's been... This is going to be his third team in two years, or I should say third team in three years with the Sixers, last year's with the Nets, and now it's with the Pelicans. And if there's a team that he could end up succeeding on, it is the New Orleans Pelicans. I mean, he's going to be part of a very good rotation. I just wonder how much playing time he's actually going to get. They have a lot of guys down low that Alvin Gentry is going to have to go through. Anthony Davis, Nikola Mirotic, Julius Randle. Uh, they got Emeka Okafor as well, who they brought up last year, along with Shek Diallo, who they drafted a couple of years ago. So you add Jaleel Okafor to that mix, I just wonder how many minutes he's going to get. But I think on a two-year deal with only this year being guaranteed, he's going to get a chance to play. And I'm really hoping that it works out for Jaleel Okafor. He really does deserve the best. All right, so speaking of players in their off-season bodies, so Jaleel Okafor looks great. James Harden, not so much. Not, not so much. Now, we're not going to talk too much about the whole, you know, Houston nightclub thing where he threw a girl's phone. Like, that's not really, it's just not a huge thing. But what is a huge thing is the fact that James Harden doesn't look great. He's looking a little pudgy in the offseason. You look at that picture on the left, uh, looking too great. You look at the picture on the right, he certainly looks better. But let's just be honest here for a second, because I'm not going to criticize James Harden. He's always been more of a thicker guy than other guards. James Harden could drop 50, could drop 50 points if he gained 30 pounds in a week. Like, this isn't a question over whether or not this is going to affect his long-term viability. It's just that we're two months away from the season, and it's not 
really how you want your reigning MVP to look. And it's just, look, again, I am not a body shamer, all right? I'm certainly not someone who's going out there looking cut as hell. But we've seen pictures of what LeBron James looks like, right? Like, the dude looks incredible at the age of 34 years old. Like, he looks like an absolute monster. And James Harden, the reigning MVP, eh, just doesn't look that great. It's not a good look for James Harden, but I think he'll be just fine for the start of the year. It's just, I mean, look at these pictures again. It's like, this is the reigning league MVP, one of the elite athletes in the NBA, it's just not a great look. I mean, especially from the other workout photos that we've seen from NBA stars. Giannis looks massive. LeBron James looks massive. And James Harden also looks massive, just not for the right reason. So hopefully James Harden can be looking a little bit better once the season comes around. So that's going to be it for James Harden looking a little bit fat. We have a comment coming in here from Facebook from Ivan saying he is the shape of a basketball. Now it needs to be pointed out. James Harden has always been a thicker guard. Like, he's always been a little bit thicker in terms of his, uh, just his body in general. I mean, that's just how he's built. But thicker in the way of, you know, being just dense and thicker maybe just being a little bit overweight are two very different things. Though, again, I'm sure, I'm sure that James Harden will be just fine for the start of the season. But, hey, he's allowed to take a little bit of a break coming off an MVP season. Let's go to our next NBA news and rumor. Jimmy Butler's got to shut his damn mouth. I'm tired of this. So... Butler has taken another shot at Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins on Instagram. He posted an Instagram photo with a caption about being a leader, got into a tiff with a commenter about Towns and Wiggins. This is now the third time that Jimmy Butler has called out the young players on his team. So the caption on Jimmy Butler's post says, quote, One job of a leader is to show the lost ones the way. Every last one of these idiots behind me looks hella lost, SMH. A commenter says, so show Towns and Wiggins the way instead of crying about them. Butler comments back, I don't cry about shit. I'm a grown-ass man. You show them since you have the answers. I'm just, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of hearing about Jimmy Butler calling out players on his team. This is a playoff team you're on, Jimmy Butler. This isn't Chicago where you're on a team with a bunch of crappy players. This is Carl Anthony Towns, one of the best centers in basketball, who I understand is 23 years old and has a little bit of issues with defense and a little bit of issues with effort. I totally understand. But... What are you doing by publicly calling them soft and by publicly just trying to get, you know, basically trying to get yourself traded? You've already turned down an extension. This is the third or fourth time that you've criticized the young players on this team publicly. If you don't want to be there, then stop dumping on the other players on this team. It's not their fault that you don't want to be there. Again, I understand that Towns and Wiggins have effort problems. I agree. I think it's one of the biggest things holding both of their careers back. But if you're Jimmy Butler and you're trying to be a leader on this team, this is the impact that you're trying to make by just calling them out on Instagram and on social media. You're a grown ass man. You're calling out kids on social media. It's weak. It's just, it, it's weak. Like you're so, you're so above this, Jimmy Butler. Like you are above this. You're a multi-time all-star. You're one of the 20 to 25 to 30 best players in the NBA. And this is, is the crap that you're getting yourself into in the offseason. It's just not necessary. It's, it's a waste of time. Whose side are you guys on? Give me a B for Jimmy Butler. Type a T for Carl Anthony Towns. I, I, I'm on Towns' side of this. I just, I just don't agree with Jimmy Butler calling these guys out during the offseason. If you're such a grown-ass man, why are you taking to your Instagram comments to call out your fellow players? Like, it's just, it, it's hypocritical. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Got a comment coming in here from Mac Ferguson on Facebook. Butler needs to join the Knicks. I don't know. Maybe he'll call out Chris Tapps Porzingis and Kevin Knox for missing a couple shots throughout a game and not letting him shoot the ball. Who knows? Jimmy Butler has complained every single place that he's been. He complained in Chicago. Now he's, you know, complaining in Minnesota. He's a great player. I'm not saying he's not a good player. I'm just tired of Jimmy Butler constantly blaming other people. Like, just go out there, play your game, and figure it out. Like, it's just, it, I just don't understand why he feels the need to call out these guys. Corey Woodruff coming in saying Butler going to the Lakers. Look, he's a bulldog. All right, I, I, I like Jimmy Butler a lot as a player. He's a bulldog, great defensive player, good two, you know, he's a good two-way player as well. I just, I, I don't understand what he gains by calling out these guys. We know he already has a problem with them. We get it. We know he has a little bit of an issue with their effort and their defense. 
but fix it on the basketball court. Don't fix it in the Instagram comments. You gain absolutely nothing by calling out teammates on social media. I just don't understand it. Let's go to our next one here. Before I get into this story, I just want to point something out. My belief system, regardless of religion or this or that, I believe in one thing. I believe in karma. I believe that what you give comes back to you. What goes around comes around. So Clippers, remember, karma always wins. And I say this because the Clippers fired Bruce Bowen, their, uh, their color commentator for their TV network, because he made critical comments about Kawhi Leonard last season and this offseason. And with the Clippers planning on making a run at Kawhi, they don't want the issues, so they outright did not allow Bruce Bowen to come back. Bruce Bowen, mind you, spent eight to nine years with the San Antonio Spurs from 2001 to 2009. He knows Greg Popovich. He played under Greg Popovich. If there's anyone who'd be allowed to comment about the Spurs situation, Bruce Bowen is a part of that group. He's absolutely someone who's allowed to comment on anything going on with the San Antonio Spurs. And I get it. He's not on the Spurs anymore. He's now the, or was the TV analyst for the Clippers. But karma is a son of a bitch. It really is. And just remember, Clippers, if you're firing a guy simply because he made one critical comment about Kawhi Leonard, karma. You're not going to get Kawhi. And whether it's because of karma or whether it's just because he's not actually going to join the Clippers because he's going to go to Lakers, it remains to be seen. But not cool at all. Not cool at all to fire Bruce Bowen simply because he made a critical comment about Kawhi Leonard, which, mind you, his comment was nothing that was out of the ordinary. Like, he didn't come out and say, oh, you know, Kawhi Leonard sucks. Oh, he's the worst person ever. All he basically said in his comments was that Kawhi Leonard was getting bad advice. That's what he said. Quote, I think he's getting bad advice. I think what you're starting to see now is an individual given a certain amount of advice, and it's not the right advice. Here it is. You were protected in San Antonio. You were able to come up during a time where you could lead on Tim, Tony, and Manny Ginobili. I think there's nothing but excuses going on. First, it was, well, I was misdiagnosed. Look here. You got $18 million this year, and you think they're trying to rush you. You didn't play for most part of a full season last year, and you're the go-to guy. You're the franchise, and you want to say that they didn't have your best interest at heart. Are you kidding me? End quote. So, there's not a single quote in there that Bruce Bowen is saying that is inaccurate. He did call out the Spurs medical staff, despite the fact, like, for whatever reason, because, you know, who knows, maybe he didn't like the opinion that they were giving him. And now he's also saying that he's getting bad advice, which he is. He's absolutely getting bad advice. Whether it's his uncle or anyone else in his family, clearly they have no idea how the NBA landscape is working, because all they've done now is ruined Kawhi Leonard's reputation. So... I think karma's going to bite the Clippers in the butt big time here. You can't just fire a dude because he's making comments about a player that isn't even on your team yet. He's not on your team. I just, it is ridiculous. Karma is going to win this battle.